Her name was Adam, with two ends. She was short and wore a bob only a mother could love. Dressed in lilac and denim, she didn't feel girly enough for a dress. She was born on April 2nd, 1997, and each year she would celebrate with her father, eating cake by the poolside, not knowing that on December 9th, 2012, she would blow her last candle out. When we quietly reflect in eulogy, we realize her blood was made of Splenda, secretly sweetening our lives. So let us pray and grieve the loss of life. Bless Anna's soul and may it rest in peace. I never knew Anna. My idea of her is the only thing I hold on to. If I knew her, there would be substance to grasp, memories to look back upon, pictures to remind myself of Anna. I can only wonder about a history not discovered, a myth in the collection of grievers, because the concept of grieving is foreign to me. We create memorials for people we don't even know. I can never say her sacred name because she's dead, and it's weird, and I wish I could hear her story and push her out of it. I want to go back and tell her, I'm sorry for not having the time of day to recognize her as more than just a blur of colors gone by the wind. Only now has Anna got my attention through the dimly lit eyes of a boy at school. Every time he contemplates suicide, I see him see his hands slip through mine like sand from Lonnie Kai. Every midnight call from him, I drop my life to focus on his silence. And I get a little scared that each pause is the end of his life sentence. You can't just go through life silent, speaking when life treats you fine and killing that voice when the pain arrives. I want to be someone who will pour hydrogen peroxide over the fissures in your flesh and bandage, bandage the self-inflicted wounds you can't forget are there. I would interlace your hand in mine and squeeze tight until the blood drained from your fingers up your arms replacing the blood spilled, and I tell you that sobbing salt water would be the cure to the cancer, malignantly spreading and infecting your being. You deteriorate, and I would be the cure to save you. In the end, we all die. But I don't want to ration the pixels on the screen depicting your face, tracing the illegible cursive in my yearbook. Each letter of yours is personal and intricate, and I can't seem to fathom the societal label you would have as just another unfortunate dead boy. I'd never be able to handle your numbing non-existence as you insist on incarcerating yourself in a cell made of unbreakable silence. I'm trapped looking in, and you're trapped looking out, and we were rivers flowing together until you downed me and flooded me with water that spilled from my eyes because I love you, and I can't do anything for you now. I am hopeless among thoughts of your own hopelessness, and I don't know how to give you the love you need, I am only 17, but I can say hi in the hallways and give hugs in your desolation. I can help you climb when your hills become mountains and your stones become walls. Sometimes the best thing we can give someone is to remember them while they're still alive instead of being another stranger like Anna. <laughs>